we're on the eve of one of the worst real estate crashes that's coming. CoreLogic, which is an agency that tracks mortgage delinquencies. We've had the highest mortgage delinquency this year, higher than any other mortgage delinquency in the last 20 years, which includes the last recession. And we know what happened to real estate with the last recession. What's gonna happen at some point, the forbearance has to end. It cannot go on forever. I know there are many pundits out there. Oh, they're gonna just add those payments to the end of the mortgage. I don't think so. Look at what happened with government backed help out programs during the last recession. There was four, three to four million people who applied for a loan notification and only three or 4,000 people got it. So one of the things that you should be aware of is what's coming. And right now, unemployment dropped to like 800,000 and it started to go back up. 800,000, I want you to think about that. Uh, one of the things that you have to understand is what is going on with the economy. Right now, there's all these talks of these stimulus package. And once again, didn't I tell you guys seven months ago, I wasn't gonna get on the stimulus check update plan because I thought it was toying with people's emotions. And here we are seven months in, and there has not been a second stimulus package. And we may not get a second stimulus package until after the election, if we get a second stimulus package. Now, what does that mean? One of the reasons that the stimulus check videos took off is there are so many people who need that money and it's not a lot of money. But once again, just like in divorce, when you tell a woman that, hey, yeah, your company, your husband had a company, he built it, you didn't do anything to it because you were legally married, you're entitled to whatever. This is the way the same people, American people feel. It's like, I should get my $1,200 stimulus check. I should get my $600 additional per week bonus for unemployment. You told me I was getting it, where's my money? And people are upset, people are hot, people are mad. And one of the things that you, you guys have got to understand is cash is king. Unless you have a rock solid FICO score, the chances of your bank lowering or cutting off your credit cards, even if you have good credit, they're still doing that. So credit can be very, very dicey unless you have rock solid credit score and an impeccable payment history. So cash will be king in 2021. And I had someone mocking me of my strategy because I'm gonna to wait to 2021 to start buying houses for rentals. And you know, it's like, oh, he's hoping, you know, cause there are many people like, once again, you could go ahead, you can fact check me, you can look at the videos where I told y'all there was no, the second, the chances of a second stimulus check package was slim to none. And even though they have quote, come to it in terms, and even though the Republicans have said like, we're offering you 1.9 trillion and the Democrats won't take it, uh, ask yourself why, why is this going on? Because once again, I, I did this in an upcoming Savage Finance video that my editors have that a Congress is bought and paid for by the corporations. Who got bailed out? The stock market, the corporations, the corporate tax break. That's who got bailed out, not the American people. And once again, who is gonna take it on the chin with this mortgage thing? It's gonna be the American people. People with equity who are able to sell their houses and get from under that mortgage or be fine. But let's go ahead and talk about that. Let's talk about wholesaling and this coming real estate crash. What do wholesalers fundamentally do? They find houses that are in bad repair, offer the owner a discounted price because the house is in bad repair, and then they try to flip it to an investor who can put money into it and bring it up to modern day and rehab it. And ask yourself, why are there so many houses available for wholesaling? Because see, I'm about to take you down a deep, deep road. This is a little savage financy, but 
most people don't handle their money correctly. So you go on ahead, you, you save the money, you get the down payment, you get your house, and you let it fall in a state of disrepair. Why? Because you don't have the money. And this house for most people is the biggest potential asset they have. And they let it crumble and they let it fall apart and they let it get outdated. I live in a wealthy neighborhood. You know what houses sell really quick around here? Updated houses. Like there's a guy uh, on my street, there's actually three people, well, four people, and two people took their houses off the market. And their houses are not updated because I've been studying the real estate market here in Atlanta. And if a house is updated and priced appropriately, it moves. But if it ain't updated, it will sit, it will sit, because these houses are like a million to $5 million. So you're gonna drop $5 million, then have to drop another two to 500,000 and update it? Why don't you just go out and get your brand new house? So this is what people are doing, because once again, there are many, many, many houses over here that have been sitting on the market for a year, and this was pre-pandemic pre-pandemic so you can only imagine what the pandemic did to that but let's get back to the core there are so many houses available for wholesale because people don't have the money to keep their houses up I want you to think about that there are millions of houses eligible for wholesale because the owner possibly died left the house it was an older house um, they're in a situation where they got a mortgage they don't have the money to fix it up there, there, there's so, you know, because I, I listen to the wholesaler videos and I listen to these stories and there, there's so many people because once again, going back to Savage Finance principles, people don't manage their money correct. They'll go out and have a new car, new boat, some toys and let their house deteriorate. And this is why this forbearance crisis that is coming is going to be so juicy for cash money real estate investors. If you've got, let's say a million dollars cash, right? And that million dollars cash would've got you five to six houses. During this crash, that million dollars is gonna get you 10 houses. So the people who are in a position to spend cash and walk in and say, look, we can close in seven days because I'm spending cash. You're gonna be getting some amazing deals because at some point, the forbearance is gonna be over. Now, I wanna do some political forecasting. If the Democrats get the presidency, and they get the Senate, we may see legislation to help out these people. But right now, I don't really know what's gonna happen. Cause you know, we've heard this before. Biden is ahead, Hillary was ahead, and Trump won. And once again, I've been looking at Trump in these rallies and the Trump people are gonna come out and vote. The ardent Trump people are gonna come out and vote. And it's, it's, it's just gonna be what it is. And there's a very good chance that Trump could be reelected. I know what the polls say and the bad handling. And I did a video and I said Trump wasn't going to die. Trump was down, what, a week and a half? And now he's on the campaign trail, even though he got the pandemic. He just ain't going to go away. He ain't going to go down fighting. And, you know, if he loses, he may not leave the White House. This is Trump. So if Trump wins, and the Senate manages to hold on to the house, this mortgage thing is gonna break and it's gonna break big. It's gonna break really, really big. And even if the Democrats win the presidency and the house, it's still gonna break at some point because they cannot create legislation to let these people sit in their houses for free for years. They can't do that. So at some point, this thing is gonna reach an apex and it's gonna break free and you're gonna see a lot of people hurt, a lot of people harmed, a lot of people losing their equity, a lot of people, because once again, one of the things that's gonna and accelerate this is we're still experiencing a high level of layoffs. And 800,000 plus, almost 900,000 people per week are being laid off for the last 10 weeks. That number is higher than the highest layoffs during the Great Recession. So at this point, and you know, next month in December, you're gonna have people who are gonna be impacted by this, and it's going to create a serious issue with mortgages. It's gonna create a serious issue with the economy. Because like I said, 2021, when these things run out, and also unemployment, let's talk about that. 
unemployment ain't forever. So if you suffer a long-term job loss, your unemployment is going to run out one day. And also, let, let's just stick it right there. I did a video talking about what happens to you when you suffer long-term employment. This damages your economic prospects for 10 to 20 years in the future. So these layoffs, these little temporary layoffs can become permanent, become a big drag, because this is how you're paid. You ever notice when you go for a job, it's been many years, I don't know if they're still doing this, but they'll ask you, how much you make at your last job? You know why? Because they're like, well, we'll offer them just a little bit above that. They're trying to get you cheap. And if you are one of these people who've been suffered long-term layoffs, whoa, you're going to have a situation in the future that is not going to be good for your financial health. It is going to be really, really bad. And so with the forbearance going to end at some point, the escalating because unemployment is starting to go back up and the health of the crisis and then the political tomfoolery that is happening. They've been playing political football for the last five months on this. And we're we're like, what, two weeks from Election Day and there's still no stimulus package. And like I said, from a philosophical standpoint, this is one of the reasons that I just did not because my heart wasn't in it because I, I did a few stimulus check videos and they did OK. But I just couldn't do that to you, America. I could, I'm like, this ain't going to happen. They're these overly generous stimulus check proposals. They're not going to happen. And I knew that a long time ago. And today, as my witness, you can see my documented statements on the YouTube that I said this was going to happen because I'm like, you know, people are like, oh, well, they're going to cut us a check. They have to. No, they don't. No, they don't. You're not paying them. See, this is what most of America doesn't understand. Corporate America has our politicians bought and paid for. They donate to the Democratic side. They donate to the Republican side. That's who the, the, the politicians are looking out for. They're looking for corporate America, which is why I state that you should become a corporate citizen. I keep saying this, come a corporate citizen, come a corporate citizen. And I got people who are dragging their feet and they're like, oh, well, you know, because you're waiting for miracles and you're waiting for fantastic things to happen. And I'm here to tell you, they're not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. So one thing that you should take from this is prepare yourself for the chaos of 2021. It's coming. It's coming. It's going to drop sometime in 2021 and it's going to be real bad. And if you are a real estate investor, if you're a real estate person, you should be in the real estate market right now. You should be looking for deals. You should be talking to people right now, because if you're not in the market, you're not going to know what's going on. And this is one of the reasons that I study my market, because the market I intend to buy in, uh, the prices are escalating because the inventory is short. But once the market breaks, once I see those signs, I'm diving in. And one of the things is we're going to become a renter nation. It's going to be most people are going, you know, because right now a lot of people are homeowners. A lot of people are going to become renters in the future because they're not going to have the income. They're not going to have the credit. They're not going to be able to buy a house. And this is going to be a, a boom for people who rent property. It's just going to be a boom because if you own property, and you're in the position to become a landlord and you're in a position to give someone shelter, it's going to be a many, many people. Because what are the, these folks who had a home and they had to sell it? What are they going to do? They're going to rent. They're going to rent an apartment or they're going to rent a house. They're going to rent. They have to live somewhere and they're going to have some income and they're going to get out their house, save their credit, and then they're going to rent, get into a rental. The rental market's going to boom. I know someone who does Airbnb and you know, this is one of the things that you have to be in the marketplace. You have to know um, she she says her 20 properties have been booked. You know, when the pandemic started, they, they experienced a drop in about three months in. And it went back to full occupancy and they started giving people deals and stuff. So once again, you, you got to know your business. You got to be in there because right now there are some uh, real estate investors who are making crazy bank because they're in the business. They're making deals. And going back to what I said about why is there such a large wholesaling inventory? Because so many people just do not have proper money management to keep their residence up. They just don't. And this is going to be huge when it comes for resale. Because like 
if I'm going out and I got 1.5 million to drop on the property, that property is gonna be exactly what I want. I'm not gonna be like, oh, I'm gonna drop 1.5 on the fixer upper, then have to put 300,000 into it, and then have to go through the deals and the hassles of having contractors up in the house, or maybe not even being able to move in for many months while they do all of this work. Why am I gonna do that when I go over here and get this new house that doesn't have these issues? See that, you know, cause price points, you gotta know your price points. You gotta know how, what it's gonna rent for. Cause uh, I'm not gonna be trying to buy a million dollar houses and rent them because that market can be a little tricky. It's a market, it's, but it can be dicey. I have a certain formula that I've calculated for myself. <clears throat> and that's where I'm going to purchase these houses to rent. And that's my concept because of based upon my research and looking at the market. But once again, be ready and also if you're going to do real estate you need to be in the market right now you need to be looking you need to know what's going on you need to have your nose to the ground so when the deals break you will know they will break because you've been doing your research so you will know like oh man last october this house was 250. right now i can get it for 190. jump you know you're gonna see crazy deals because i remember during the last recession there was a house that went for 250 and I just tracked this house because it was an amazing neighborhood. It was a massive house and it went for 250 it sold. Recently that house appraised for 630. So it regained all its value plus a premium. And you know, once again, you got to know your markets. You got to know your markets. You got to be aware cuz like I said, I'm watching the unemployment rate creep back up. I'm listening to all of this banter between the Republicans and the Democrats. And essentially, I can tell you, there are many, many people who are suffering. There are many, many people who have moved in with mom and dad or moved in with mom or dad. There are many adults who are not able to live on their own. I'm talking a, a record number. I've actually, when I was doing my sugar baby research, because I approach it like a a an archaeologist because i'd be asking all kind of questions what she's like why are you asking all these questions i said i'm doing some research i'm sure i'm researching you sugar babies and you know a lot of them don't even have a car that's how bad off they are they don't even have a car and a lot of them are living with their parents and i'm talking about 22 to 35 years old so right there, that just kind of tells me that you've made a lot of bad decisions in your life. Because once again, the pandemic's only been going on for seven months. Um, once again, there are some good hardworking people who have been steamrolled by this thing. I get it, I understand it. But there are some people who, they were always yard birds. They were never independent. They never lived on their own. They were always yard birds. And this is one of the things I'm finding out with the Shrew Baby population. A lot of them are yard birds. A lot of them are just trash. I don't care how cute they may be from a personality standpoint, from an asset based standpoint, from the way they run their life. They're just trash, just absolutely trash. And it is very interesting because I was on that site today and I saw a 67 year old woman on that website. What is going through your head, grandma? What is going through your head? She was 67 years old on the Sugar Baby website. I was just like a, a 50 year old and I'm seeing some hobbits and some booger wolves. I'm like, <laughs> You, you think you gonna be someone's sugar baby? Really? You and that hot dog you call a gut? Really? I'm just like, desperate times provoke people to do desperate things because I'm just sitting here scrolling and laughing my ass off. I'm like, there ain't no way that's gonna work. You know what you look like. You, you see yourself in the mirror every day. You know you ain't cute. I'm just sitting there like, the pandemic has brought people out and it's brought people to their knees. Right now, there are people who don't have food to eat. Right now, there are people who don't have gas for their cars. There's people who are on the verge of losing their cars to the repossession because the repo man, he's circling, he's circling. And right now, there, there's so many bad things that are going on and it's just gonna get worse. 
unless you go over to Savage Finance and start watching the videos and start it. Cause you know, uh, there's, there's a video in here that savers are losers. If you've got $20, $30 a dollars cash money and no bills, you're not a loser. You winning, you winning like a mofo. And don't listen to all this other stuff because there's a certain amount of money you need to save. And then once you get out of debt, then you can become an investor. But, but you know, right now, and this, this is one of the things I'm starting to see. I, I have a friend and we've been diametrically opposed on this issue because he has a lot of debt, but he's trying to quote invest. And uh, recently his wife lost her job and he can't invest. And now he has to sell some stuff. They had to sell a car because he had no cash because he was trying to be an investor. And I was just sitting there like, I was talking mad smack. I was like, oh, you got to sell a car, huh? I guess the, the, the stuff that I'm talking really starting to shine on you now. And he was just silent, biting his teeth, just hur, hur, growling and stuff because I told him what to do, but because he thought he was smarter than me, he didn't want to do it. And he's like, I'm gonna keep investing. I got a company match and all this other stuff. No emergency fund. And I told him, I said, look, you know, right now you're good, but what if your wife loses her job? What if you lose your job and you don't have no cash? You got to start selling stuff. I told him this seven months ago. Had to sell a car and it took a hit, took a loss. And I talked smack to him. I was like, you should have listened to me. I'm older, smarter, and richer than you. I know you feel that because you were so modern, but the financial principles that I've been telling you about are timeless and they work. And he ain't say nothing. He was just sitting there mad, just hmm, hmm, hmm. I like, you could be mad, but the fact is you had to sell your car at a loss because you didn't listen to me. And your wife can't find a job. She can't. So that's all I got for you guys. Go ahead, govern yourself accordingly. And for those of you who want to win in the future and what start winning right now, enroll in the corporate toolbox. The price is going up November. There will not be no Black Friday sales. There will not be any Christmas specials. I know there are many of you are waiting on that. I'm not doing that. I may do that with Hustler Kung Fu products, but I'm not going to do that with B-School for Hustlers because actively uh, next month I'm going to get on to branding. And right now I'm on marketing and I need to reschedule the live webinar because I got a lot more stuff to drop because, you know, I keep thinking I could get it done quicker than I really can. And it's just, it's a process. So I got to move the webinar, but the marketing aspect is the most important thing because the marketing aspect teaches you how to get customers. And if you don't have customers, you don't have a business. Just simple facts. So go below, you can get in for 3,500 one-time fee, or you can go ahead and buy the whole deal for 7,500, or you can get in for $150 per month for 30 months. All of this pricing will change November 1st. Just letting you know. And it's hot, it's hot, teach you how to set the corporate structure. Uh, I did a video, there was uh, one video talking about why holding companies don't save you taxes. And I was just sitting there biting my teeth because I wanted to get up all up in the comments, but I was like, you know what? You can't convince someone who feels that they're right when they feel that they're right. They're not open to being taught the real deal because Warren Berkshire Hathaway, which is a holding company, did 560 billion and only paid 3.5 million in tax billion in taxes. You made 560, but you only paid. Applebit holding company for Google paid zero taxes. So I don't know where this notion that, you know, you cannot save money with a whole save money on uh, taxes with a holding company and in the whole, in the corporate toolbox, I give you a strategy that will save you massive levels of money. And I give you a game you can play for years, years, years. So that's all I got for you guys. I'll see you in the next one.